Hello, my name is Sean Gallagher, and welcome to part two in the series about hypnosis. Today we're going to talk about the differences and similarities between hypnosis and meditation. We're going to talk about the brainwave states, some basics about hypnosis, and then some basics about meditation. A lot of people do ask, what is the difference between hypnosis and meditation? So perhaps by the end of this, you'll have a better sense of that. When we come to understanding the different brainwave states that we have, apparently our brains have enough electricity to power a 60-watt light bulb. So when scientists analyze our brainwave states, they've identified at least five different types. And just to say off the top, we're capable of running all five of them apparently at the same time. It's just which one is more dominant at a given time. Gamma brainwave state has the most electricity happening. Beta has less than the gamma. Alpha less still. Theta very low levels of electricity. And delta extremely low levels of electricity. So the gamma brainwave state is the fastest, so it's a high frequency, just think flute music as opposed to bass instruments. This happens when there's simultaneous processing of information from different brain areas. And when we have that moment where we have a big aha or a big realization or epiphany about something, it's usually we're in the gamma state. A lot of people strive to encourage the brainwave pattern of gamma because we can feel this wonderful awareness of universal love, altruism, expanded consciousness, and growing spiritually. When we come to the beta brainwave state, beta is usually the dominant state that we're in when we go about our day. We use beta for our cognitive tasks and navigating our world. When we are alert, attentive, engaged in problem solving, judgment, focused mental activity, then typically we are in beta. But the experts do distinguish between levels of beta. And you can be in a beta state that's encouraging more anxiety or a beta state that's a productive, helpful state. When we're drifting off to sleep, typically we move from beta into alpha. And when we meditate, we typically go into the state of alpha. We also go into alpha when we are in hypnosis. And hypnotists refer to this state as trance. Whenever we're in the state of the now moment, when we're in the present, this would also be alpha. This state encourages mental coordination, calmness, alertness, learning, and more. And as we drift off to sleep even deeper, we move from alpha to theta. So typically theta is a REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep where we're dreaming. We can go into theta for deep meditation and deep hypnotic trance. And theta has its benefits in terms of learning memory and intuition. Delta is deep dreamless sleep. So when we're in this state our eyes are not moving and we need to access this state of sleep for physical health and well-being, restoration of the body. Those are the main brainwave states. When we look at meditation, typically we can be in either alpha or theta brainwave states. There are many different types of meditation. There's mindfulness meditation, where we're noticing our thoughts coming and going, and ideally we're doing so without judgment. Compassion meditation, loving kindness meditation, those are ones where we may be repeating a phrase or a concept. And mantra-based meditations, sometimes people are given a specific mantra to repeat over and over again. One of the ideas of meditation is that we focus on something. So we may focus on a mantra, we may focus on our breath. And as our thoughts come and go, it's helpful to have something to refocus on, something like our breath, because that helps bring us back to what we're doing with the meditation. Loving-kindness meditation, for example, 
We'll repeat these sentences. And as we go into this process, as we're focusing on sending loving energy to others, having all of us enveloped in that loving energy, sending loving kindness to ourselves, This is quite powerful, and this is one of the key pillars of Buddhist meditation. Typically, when we're in meditation, we're in a lighter state than we would be as compared to hypnosis. And as you remember from the previous video, the critical faculty needs to step aside for hypnosis to be active. So this is not necessary for meditation. And a large part of meditation is just the intent you bring to it. And meditation can be a 10-day retreat. It could be 30 seconds waiting on hold. You can do walking meditations. There's lots of different ways you can incorporate meditation into your day. There's a fair bit of research to show clear health benefits for meditation. Meditating 20 to 40 minutes a day allows the body to repair itself more easily when we're really busy in our minds with active thoughts, and especially thoughts that have a lot of judgment and criticism of ourselves or others. Then there's something about that that makes it difficult for the body to maintain excellent health and vitality. The goal of meditation, for the most part, is refocusing your attention. So if you imagine that there's a muscle that is labeled attention, that muscle's getting stronger with meditation. The goal is not to clear your mind of all thoughts. That's pretty much impossible as humans. We will always have thoughts. But to be more in control of the thoughts and to be able to direct your attention where needed, when appropriate. In general, meditation is best done in a setting that allows focus. Usually recommended to sit upright so that you're avoiding drifting into sleep. As I mentioned earlier, you can incorporate meditation into daily activities. So there's lots of different ways for washing dishes or other activities that you can make that a meditative process. Your skill at meditation usually requires a lot of practice. So most people find small gains over long periods of time. And then when they stop meditating, they can lose some of those gains. So it's always best to keep up your meditation practice to maintain the gains that you've got. And oftentimes a lot of people will comment that they don't necessarily see the differences, but other people will say, oh, you're less reactive, or you seem calmer, or easier to get along with. Now, hypnosis is best done in a setting as well that allows focus. So typically, we get into a comfortable chair or a position. I'm okay with clients lying down. Some hypnotists prefer clients to be sitting up, so you may find a difference that way. Hypnosis When we do it for ourselves, called self-hypnosis, can be very, very short, so it doesn't need to be a lengthy process. Similar to meditation, and this is borne out in the research when they're analyzing people, experimenting with different types of hypnosis, the more we do hypnosis, the more skilled we get at it and the better the outcome. Hypnosis encourages the critical faculty to step aside. So the critical faculty is that part of us that is looking at something through the lens of judgment, and that's in our conscious mind, and it's part of the frontal lobe, our executive function. So it's a really important part of our minds, but it can be helpful to have that part of our mind have a chance to get some rest from time to time. So when that part steps aside, then it's easier to access the inner lines of computer code in the unconscious mind and make changes. The goal of hypnosis is positive suggestions being accepted into the subconscious unconscious minds. Being a non-smoker for life, or moderate portions of healthy, nutritious food, or getting to bed and getting to sleep by a certain time and having a particular number of deep and restorative restful hours of sleep. So we're plugging in positive suggestions. Hypnosis is well known for habit change. 
There's a huge body of research for pain management, and we can get actual changes happening in our body with hypnosis. So blood pressure can come back to a normal level if it's too high. People can stop bleeding by just focusing the mind. Lots of things you can do with hypnosis, and we'll get into that in another video. With hypnosis, you can go much deeper. So in a way, it's easier because especially if somebody else is guiding your hypnosis or you're listening to a recording and you're able to lie down, then that allows that conscious mind to step aside more easily and allows you that advantage of going into a deeper state of inner focus. You can make your meditation practice somewhat hypnotic by adding positive suggestions. One thing you could do is, perhaps near the beginning or the end, or somewhere in your meditation practice, suggestion along the lines of, every time I do my meditation, I'm feeling calmer and more at peace, and these benefits stay with me for the rest of my day. So that would be a positive suggestion that is right along the lines of classic hypnosis. You can use your self-hypnosis to get into the meditative state faster. Sometimes I find if I'm doing, say, a 40-minute meditation and my brain's a little too overactive, it can take me 30, 35 minutes to just calm my brain down, and then I've only got a little bit of time for my meditation. But I do my self-hypnosis first, get myself into that alpha or theta state first, and then I can run it for a longer period of time. Of course, you can do mantras while you're in hypnosis. And then there's a type of hypnosis called spiritual hypnosis, where we're connecting with our soul, our higher self, learning about what our soul goal mission is for this life, and lots of other different ways that we can use hypnosis spiritually. Guided imagery is quite similar to both meditation and hypnosis. So guided imagery is typically... Now imagine yourself in a beautiful garden and as you're going through the garden, the narrator may point out aspects of the garden, the beautiful flowers, the birds, the good feeling, the wonderful scent in the air. And that would be the entire process of a guided imagery where you just go to this beautiful garden and then you come out and you just bring that good feeling with you. You can turn guided imagery into hypnosis by adding positive suggestions. And positive suggestions or positive affirmations are usually done in the beta brainwave state. So typically if somebody's got a list of positive suggestions, something along the lines of every day in every way, I allow myself to be more gentle, kind, and compassionate with myself, you could repeat that in the waking state, the beta brainwave state. And that's going to sink in over time. But typically, when positive statements are repeated over and over again, they need to be done a lot in order for that to be accepted deeper. When we look at the research on hypnosis for childbirth preparation, people who have indicated that they have a meditation practice generally find hypnosis easier to access. And I find that as well. If a client tells me that there is a history of practicing meditation, then generally they will go into hypnosis much easier and it'll work a little faster and more effectively for them. Usually these people will comment, you know, I did the hypnosis, but it didn't feel all that different to me. And no, it's not going to feel all that different because it's the same state, either alpha or theta or a bit of both, what we're doing, a goal for the hypnosis is somewhat different than the meditation. And anybody who's used to managing internal states and accessing these inner focus states will find hypnosis easier. So I've had clients who are visual artists or musicians, or they have some kind of work or some other aspect of their life, athletes as well, where they're just well trained in going into this internal focus state and it's just natural for them. For myself, because I was born with a hearing loss, 
and it was decided early on in my life that it was not a good idea to have a hearing aid. I don't know what that decision was about, but at any rate, I grew up not hearing a lot of what was going on in school and in other settings. So I would go into trance a lot because I just couldn't hear what was going on. And that became something that just was well practiced for me. So different individuals will have different abilities that way. A common suggestion given in hypnosis may be something like you may notice pleasurable feelings as you go deeper. Common statements in a meditation practice would be just observe the thought and then let it go. Release attachment. We focus on your breath. Those are the sorts of things you might hear if you're being guided in meditation. So different states of consciousness are reinforced with meditation, different states of consciousness reinforced with hypnosis. So your brain is working in different ways with meditation and with hypnosis. So I would suggest that you do both because there are health benefits to both and mood benefits. There's lots of really great outcome for doing both. So to summarize, we have different brainwave states that we can tap into throughout our day and as we're sleeping at night. And the trance state that we talk about in hypnosis is a natural state. We all are able to access this state because we're in and out of it all the time. We spend the first seven or so years of our lives in profound hypnotic states. Small babies, children, all the way up to about seven, eight years old, they're in a constant state of hypnosis where they're just downloading because they don't have the critical faculty fully formed yet. It's a natural state. Everybody's capable of going into hypnosis. For the most part, what I find with clients is that if it's not important to them, it's not a goal that's important to them, then they're just not going to want to do this process. When somebody's highly motivated, say for childbirth preparation or some other way, typically they will be able to get into this state and allow it to work more efficiently for them. Primary goal of hypnosis is your positive suggestion. Most people find hypnosis actually easier to use compared to meditation. I hear a lot of people saying they're frustrated with meditation, that it's a lot of work, it's hard to do. It doesn't have to be that way because you can just do a couple of minutes. But hypnosis, putting on a recording, going to sleep to a recording is super simple, super easy. And we train our brain based on the different states of consciousness. So you want to exercise different parts of your brain and have those working for you. Thank you for joining me with this video. For more information, please feel free to access my website or call me. And I look forward to hearing your thoughts, your ideas and feedback. Thank you.